New shapes discovered among the famous Nazca lines. This is Skywatch TV News for Friday, July 17th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. Two dozen new geoglyphs have been located using 3D scans of the Earth at that famous site in Peru. This brings the total number of images found at Nazca to 41. The new uh, images range from 16 to 66 feet tall and are believed to date back to about 400 to 200 B.C. The previous images, the ones that you've seen on TV and in books, uh, thought to be created hundreds of years later, between 400 and 650 A.D. These newly discovered images created with a different technique, which leads some researchers to believe that it was a different culture entirely that created these images at Nazca. Nobody really knows what these uh, images were used for, for sure. But of course, if you ask the uh, ancient astronaut crowd, Yes, not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. Uh, for a more sensible interpretation of the Nazca lines, I recommend you visit the website ancientaliensdebunked.com. That's ancientaliensdebunked.com. Here in the U.S., an interesting discovery. Archaeologists have found a dwelling in Ohio so old, they don't even have a name for the Native American tribe that might have built the home. It's a 4,000-year-old structure located in a community at a dig site about 30 miles west of Cleveland, part of a permanent village site where the houses have clay floors. The clay was actually mined and put down inside to create a floor for these homes, uh, indicating that they were permanent residences. Uh, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History's head of archaeology, Brian Redmond, says there's no other site like it in Ohio. Now, of course, there is a famous site in Ohio you're probably familiar with, the Serpent Mound. Um, it, uh, like the Nazca Lines, the Serpent Mound has become a uh, magnet for New Agers. The, the mound is over 1,300 feet long, about a quarter of a mile, looks like an uncoiling serpent. The head appears to align with the rising sun during the summer solstice. Well, in November of 2012, which of course was the height of the Mayan 2012 apocalypse prediction mania, a group of so-called light warriors buried a bunch of, according to the news reports, muffin crystal thingies aluminum filings and quartz crystals cast in resin, baked in muffin tins, so-called orgonites. They uh, were intended to lift the vibration of the earth so that we could all rise together. And while I appreciate their concern, I already have plans for some future day when I will rise, and that is when he returns at the head of his heavenly army. Anyway, new research indicates that the Serpent Mound may be a lot older than was originally thought. The theory uh, was that the mound was created about 1000 or 1100 A.D. The new date of construction now estimated to be about 320 B.C. That would put it about the time of Alexander the Great. Uh, the builders now identified as part of the Adena culture, which would be the ancestors, it's believed, of the tribes of the Shawnee, the Kickapoo, Miami, Illinois, and other Native American tribes. On Wednesday night, the cable sports network ESPN handed out its annual awards, the uh, ESPYs, and Caitlyn Jenner was awarded the Arthur Ashe Courage Award. Now, as, as a courtesy, I will refer to her as Caitlyn, or him, I should say, as Caitlyn instead of Bruce. I've, I've known many people in the broadcasting industry who used professional names. In fact, I've used professional names in the past. So as a courtesy, I'll, I will call him Caitlyn, but his pronoun is fixed. It is masculine, and that is determined by his genetic code, which has not changed in spite of the cosmetic surgery. Now, it's been disclosed, sadly, that the award that uh, Mr. Jenner was given is about as real as his identity as a woman. His representatives, it's reported today, cut a deal with the Disney Corporation, which is the parent company of both ESPN and ABC, his representatives demanded an ESPY at the annual ESPY Awards in exchange for granting ABC exclusive rights to an interview with Diane Sawyer for 2020. They also offered free plugs for ESPN on Mr. Jenner's forthcoming reality show, I Am Kate, which not coincidentally debuts this weekend. With all due respect, Mr. Jenner doesn't need awards he needs counseling. And I don't say that lightly or to be snarky or to try to be funny. The facts are these. 
nearly half of transgender people attempt suicide. The attempted suicide rate for the total population is less than 5%. There is a tenfold difference in the suicide rate, attempted suicide rate, between transgender and the general population. That statistic does not include those who actually succeed in killing themselves. Further, a 2003 study in Sweden found, and I quote, persons with transsexualism after sex reassignment have considerably higher risks for mortality, suicidal behavior, and psychiatric morbidity, morbidity is a diseased state, than the general population. Our findings suggest that sex reassignment, although alleviating gender dysphoria, may not suffice as treatment for transsexualism. End quote. That's a nice way of saying it doesn't work. The London Guardian wrote in 2004, quote, the review of more than 100 international medical studies of post-operative transsexuals by the University of Birmingham's Aggressive Research Intelligence Facility found no robust scientific evidence that gender reassignment surgery is clinically effective. The statistics indicate that 41% of transgenders will attempt suicide. These statistics are reported by advocacy groups for the transgender lifestyle. But we are supposed to believe that this astonishingly high rate of attempted suicide is entirely the fault of people like you and me who cling to an outmoded, archaic definition of gender roles that were codified by a tribal leader wandering in the desert of Arabia 3,500 years ago. That just isn't rational thinking. So why are we honoring somebody who is actively encouraging people to embrace a lifestyle, forgetting about counseling, that shows no promise of actually helping them overcome their psychological issues? A lifestyle in which two out of five people will attempt to kill themselves. And I repeat, statistics don't include those, as far as I know, who actually succeed. What do we make of a society that calls the public veneration of this deadly lifestyle courageous? In my view, it's a warning bell, sounding the alarm that America, the West, has absolutely committed to a culture of death. Children are a burden in our society. The unborn at the mercy of parents who may, for any reason or no reason at all, decide to terminate their lives. As mentioned yesterday, over 40% will be born to single parents in spite of the strong correlations shown again and again between growing up in a fatherless household and violence, drug abuse, emotional and psychological issues. The only good news in all of this may be for Planned Parenthood. Not only do they turn a profit on their abortion business, but they also allegedly pad their bottom line by selling off body parts of aborted fetuses. By the way, one bit of good news, it's reported today that uh, Congress has announced it will open an investigation into Planned Parenthood over the video that we reported earlier this week. Frankly, our society has gone mad. The only reason this makes any sense at all is that we understand that there's a spiritual war taking place and that the active participants are not those who show up in the news, those who are venerated as courageous, for engaging in cosmetic surgery and wearing a fabulous Versace gown. The actual contenders, the opponents against whom we wrestle are the principalities, the powers, the thrones, the dominions that the Apostle Paul wrote about. Literal, intelligent evil that seeks to do us harm. And it is they who are influencing those people whose voices we hear encouraging a new generation to adopt this lifestyle and reject the design of God's creation. Male and female created he them. Replacing that definition with transgender or gender fluid, gender queer, intergender, agender, bigender, pangender, non-binary, even our pronouns are outdated. Z, Zem, and Zers, spelled with the letter X, intended to rep replace he, she, and it. Although there are some out there who insist on being referred to as it. 
So no, Mr. Jenner is not courageous. He's being enabled by those around him who see profit in his psychological and emotional trials. And when the lights dim and the crowds fade away, when he's left alone in the dark with his thoughts, his feelings, and the realization that cosmetic surgery did not solve the problems that drove him to that measure, pray that there is someone there who will say, Caitlin, Bruce, there's someone who loves you. He created the universe. He died for you. And pray that this person knows the God of the Bible and is able to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, reveal that to Mr. Jenner. In this month's Skywatch magazine, we address a topic that um, seems especially relevant in our culture today, and that is parenting as a form of spiritual warfare. We welcome Doug Overmeyer of Sears C Ministry, a new contributor to Skywatch magazine. One of many new articles you'll find at that magazine. Uh, Doug Woodward writing about how the conflict in Ukraine may lead to something much more serious. Uh, Doug Krieger, Josh Peck with another mind-bending article about the nature of reality. Uh, Sharon Gilbert offering a new series called Icon, Engineering a New God about the transhumanist movement. And my analysis of the occult symbolism present in the transhumanist film Transcendence, which starred Johnny Depp. All of that available for free at skywatchtv.com. Look for the uh, link to the free magazine in the top menu bar there, and uh, we think you'll find something educating and edifying uh, in uh, Skywatch magazine. Looking forward to next Tuesday night, part two of the two-part interview with Gary Stearman about his fantastic book, Time Travelers of the Bible, How the Hebrew Prophets Shattered the Barriers of Time. Uh, That will air Tuesday night on the Christian Television Network, DirecTV Channel 376, Dishnet Channel 267, Glory Star Satellite, Channel 117. That's Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, uh, UTC minus 5. It also streams on the Christian Television Network at that time. Their website is ctnonline.com, and look for the link to their live stream. And if you can't watch it live, then catch it on the Roku channel. Skywatch TV Roku channel makes it possible to watch these daily updates and our weekly show any time of the day or night that's convenient for you. If you haven't added it to your account yet, log on to skywatchtv.com slash Roku or log on to your Roku account and search for Skywatch TV in the Roku channel store. And for the month of July, we're offering this book as our thank you to you for your financial gift of $10 or more to Skywatch TV. Dr. Gary Smalling's excellent book, I Promise How Five Commitments Determine the Destiny of Your Marriage. We appreciate your support. It makes it possible for us to get this message out. And uh, again, our thank you to you for your gift of $10 or more. The book by Dr. Gary Smalley. Just log on to skywatchtv.com and look for the link on how to donate. Happy to take your comments, answer your questions as best I can, and uh, listen to your suggestions. Send those to me by email, dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. Have a blessed weekend, and thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.